Uh, today, this is probably my favorite demonstration. It's upscaled a lot from what you often see it. And it is called elephant toothpaste, because we think it's so powerful even an elephant could use it. And it involves the nasty chemical, hydrogen peroxide. Again, it's in an accordion-type bottle. If something started to react too early, the bottle would expand and contain the material. So here we have hydrogen peroxide. And I am going to uh, use some here. And I think they limited me with the amount. <laughs> They, they knew what I would do if I had more, because I would have used more. <laughs> but it will work. Oh, that's going to work great, Dwayne. Yeah, that, that should work great. Okay. And we end up needing to uh, put some joy in your teaching. And so I have some joy detergent. So I'm going to put some joy in. Always a little joy in your classroom. Right? Always a little joy. So here we are. Okay, we got some joy in there. And um, we'd like our reaction to be somewhat colorful. And the reaction is very vicious, and so sometimes doesn't uh, end up uh, letting the colors remain, but we're going to try. And I'm going to put in some colors. Is that your favorite color first there? Oh, yes, first favorite color first. Probably won't be this color by the time it's done. But start with that. Okay. And so we use one color there. And let's uh, rotate the test tube and run another bead. Now the bead's not staying there too well, but we will see what we can do. So we'll put another bead down. Okay. Hopefully that one will stick and hold a little better. And uh, let's do a third one. You know, I bet the problem is that they're using clean glassware here. <laughs> yes. When I do this at my lab, I have no problem. Yeah. They, the colors just stay right on the side of the tube. But here we are. You know why we put colors in, don't we? You know what toothpaste uses? It has colors. Oh, yeah. What's that, what's that brand called again? Uh, the, something called Stripe, I think. Stripe toothpaste. Stripe yeah. toothpaste. So the... we're going to try and get Stripe toothpaste out of this. OK, we'll do that a little bit. And now I need a catalyst. Oh, I think I've got one right here, you, Dwayne. you got a catalyst? I do. Look at this. Black Angus, Brown Swiss, Guernsey, Guernsey Hefford, Hefford, Holstein, Holstein. Jersey, and your favorite? Which oh, is brown Swiss. Dwayne used to ride a brown Swiss. I used to ride a brown Swiss. I had a brown Swiss pet in FFA. And so I used to ride a brown Swiss, yes. So is this piece of paper going to fit in that? Uh... No. I'm going to have to activate it with one over here. This right here is some sodium iodide. And I'm going to make a solution that is pretty saturated right now with that. Uh, you can use lots of things for catalysts, but uh, the sodium iodide ends up, uh, I found that it seems to be about the best as far as getting a dramatic reaction. So here we are. Let's shake that up some more. And now we are about ready to proceed. We'll get this stuff out of the way. We have a nice big tray that catches things. And I have some, uh, I put some additional uh, trash bags under it. If you're in a classroom and you don't have a big tray like this, I suggest you take a big trash bag, put it underneath, because you may need it. They may, right. You're right, Dwayne. They yeah. may need it. it All righty. Prudent here, to do that. Here we go. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit the side of the glass. This is a little, you know, extra technique. <laughs> I'm trying to hit the side of the glass right about where the surface of it is so it sort of rolls it as it ends up going in. So here we go. Are we set? Whoa! There we that, go. That, that was a good one. That was a good one. Okay. Do I have enough? I think you do. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Look it's at like that. you're a professional. Professional. And we did get some stripes. 
So there's a green stripe through there. There's some yellow right there. The blue was ran, the test tube was too clean. Oh, there's a little blue stripe right there. Yeah, that looks a little toasty warm, doesn't it? Yeah, a little warm. It's a very exothermic reaction. And it's the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. And it makes oxygen and water. Now, it's possible to take a wood splint and test it, but you basically got to be in a really dark room, and it doesn't show up really well unless you happen to get a nice bubble area or so. And you got to be fairly quick because and you the got, oxygen leaves, and if you stick right. it in, and it, like here, it's not going to work. And put it up. students and so forth want to come up and touch this stuff. Okay. I don't recommend that. <laughs> I am quite sure that the hydrogen peroxide is probably completely dis, uh, decomposed. However, there are side reactions that can occur. And your iodide ion probably has made a little bit of iodine. So you can stain your hands a little bit and sure. so forth if you go in there. And so you don't want uh, your parents calling up and saying, gee, my kid's got stains on his hands. What did you do? That's the other reason to cover the desk, because it will stain your desk right. and your tile floor if it gets on there. Yeah, it will stain. How do you use this? Well, you can use this many, many times. Do it on a smaller scale. Uh, kids always want to see it, so you can do it about four or five times during the year. You can do it when you start out and talk about writing reactions. And that's just simply hydrogen peroxide decomposing. Sure. That's, you can do it when you do that. You can do it when you talk about exothermic reactions. The heat was enough. Here you could see some steam come sure. off when it started. So you can do it when you have exothermic reactions. You can do it when you have oxidation reduction, because this is an oxidation reduction reaction. You can do it uh, when you talk about rates of reactions and catalysts and activation energy. And so you can do it for that. You can do it in AP chemistry by having the AP kids try to figure out the mechanism for this reaction. It's got a catalyst, so the catalyst must be regenerated. Sure. And they can try to figure out what are the steps that the chemical reaction went through so that we would have this reaction happen and the catalyst would keep there. In this case, the catalyst was the saturated sodium iodide. Uh, generally, uh, people don't tend to use saturated. They use something, they use solutions of sodium iodide, uh, potassium iodide solutions, manganese dioxide. Of course, then you get black all over the place. Yeah. Uh, so various things will work. Uh, another thing you can do with this, if you're talking about rates and surface areas, manganese metal is very, very nice and is a surface catalyst. And you can take a little bit of hydrogen peroxide on the side, put in manganese metal, and it'll generate oxygen at a nice rate. You put in two pieces, and it makes it twice as fast if you've got the same size because of the surface area. The manganese dioxide probably has manganese, or manganese metal probably has manganese dioxide a little bit on the coating. And so you can control a reaction very, very well with manganese metal. Okay, so that's... Probably my favorite reaction.